Ever wondered why sometimes making a healthy choice leads to unexpected results? Imagine this. You've decided to embrace a ketogenic lifestyle, hoping to manage your weight and improve your health, only to find your cholesterol levels hitting the roof. What's going on here? Today, we're diving deep into the paradox of high cholesterol on a keto diet. But first, let's set the stage with some crucial context. In 2018, the American Heart Association released new guidelines that might change how you view cholesterol. They stated that total cholesterol isn't significantly linked to heart disease. Surprising, right? But there's more to it. Did you know your body produces most of the cholesterol found within it? Yes, a whopping 75 to 80 percent of cholesterol is manufactured by your own system, and only about 20 percent to 25 percent comes directly from your diet. Cholesterol isn't just some unwanted guest. It's essential for making hormones, cell membranes, vitamin D, and bile, which helps you digest fats. This brings us to an interesting point. When people take statin drugs to reduce cholesterol, they often face a myriad of side effects. Why? Because they're interfering with the processes critical to our body's function. Let's explore this further with a real-world example. We'll look at a detailed cholesterol report from Peter, someone who's been on a ketogenic diet and faced the shock of high cholesterol readings. His report from October 2016 shows a total cholesterol level of 261, significantly above the normal threshold. But here's where it gets fascinating. Most people might panic seeing such numbers, but there's a twist. Total cholesterol isn't just floating around your arteries clogging them up. It's packaged within spherical particles called lipoproteins. Without getting too technical, these lipoproteins are the vehicles that transport cholesterol through the bloodstream. Peter's LDL, often called bad cholesterol, was 195, way above the ideal range. Yet, his HDL, the good cholesterol, was 71. Quite impressive, a mere 66, well within the safe zone. This detailed report doesn't just stop at the surface. It distinguishes between two types of LDL, the large buoyant type, which is less concerning, and the small dense type, which is more prone to cause arterial damage. Thankfully, Peter's high LDL levels mainly were the large buoyant type. Now let's break away from the numbers and talk about what this means in everyday terms. A prominent TV doctor on CNN offers a helpful analogy. Think of your arteries like a non-stick frying pan. Typically, things don't stick. But if you scratch the surface, fats and other substances start to cling. Similarly, it's not cholesterol itself that's the issue. It's when the arterial wall is damaged problems begin. So why did Peter, who was diligently following a ketogenic diet, end up with such high cholesterol? The answer lies in the diet's nature. A ketogenic diet is low in carbs but high in fats, so your body starts burning more fat for energy, releasing cholesterol into the bloodstream. This transitional period can result in fluctuating cholesterol levels, but it's not inherently harmful, provided the diet is well managed and balanced. That's why it's crucial to look beyond standard cholesterol tests and opt for advanced lipid profiles that give a clearer picture of heart health risks. Let's delve a bit deeper into what causes arterial damage. It's not just about cholesterol. Inflammation plays a key role. Inflammation can be triggered by various factors, including high blood sugar levels, unhealthy oils like corn or soybean, smoking, and even stress. Moreover, certain dietary deficiencies can exacerbate the issue. For example, lacking vitamin E, an essential antioxidant, can leave your arteries more vulnerable to damage. This is particularly common in diets high in refined flour products. Now imagine looking inside an artery. The inner layer, the endothelium, is extraordinarily delicate and sensitive to blood sugar levels. 
Excessive glucose in the bloodstream can rust these inner walls, leading to inflammation and plaque buildup. This cascade of reactions, oxidation, inflammation, and calcification can create a blockage over time. If this blockage occurs in a coronary artery, it could lead to heart attacks. Or in cerebral arteries, it could cause strokes. But here's the good news. Much of this is preventable. Reducing sugar intake, managing stress, and avoiding inflammatory foods can protect your arterial health significantly. And on a ketogenic diet, understanding these dynamics can help you navigate the potential pitfalls more effectively. Before we wrap up, I want to encourage you to take cholesterol management seriously. It's about avoiding the pitfalls many encounter regarding this condition and fortifying your body's defenses. Strengthening your immune system is crucial, now more than ever. So, have we demystified the cholesterol puzzle for you? Remember, it's not just about lowering numbers, but understanding what those numbers mean. Thank you for watching. And until next time, keep striving for a healthier, informed lifestyle.